Hi, hello again on my scientific blog Discover Social Sciences. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Krzysztof Waśniewski. I am assistant professor at the Andrzej Frycz Modrzewski University in Kraków, Poland. And uh, this video and this video channel on YouTube is generally made of videos coupled uh, with my written updates uh, on my research blog, Discover Social Science. Excuse me, I have to move my microphone a little bit closer. Ah, I think that now uh, the audio will be a little bit better. Uh, so, uh, first of all, a uh, usual introduction to those who are new to that YouTube channel. Uh, this channel, as I said, is coupled with a written scientific blog, Discover Social Sciences. And uh, my general drill when I place an update on my blog is to prepare a video editorial, so, sort of a very condensed video version of what I write. Uh, I do it for two reasons. First of all, it helps me thinking. I discovered that when I phrase out my thoughts both in writing and in a video form, I just uh, get better in science. I can, uh, uh, with time, I can better at, uh, I get better at uh, expressing uh, my scientific ideas, which is useful because I am a university professor. Uh, so, the general uh, way of coupling between my blog and this video channel is uh, that essentially uh, titles of videos on that YouTube channel are the same as titles of written updates on my blog. So, when you go to the description box below this video, you will find a link, discoversocialsciences.com. When you click on that link, it will take you to the website uh, of my blog under the same name, Discover Social Sciences. And uh, on the website, you will find a written update which has the same title as this video. And in that written update, you find like more data, you find the source data uh, that I use uh, in my research. Uh, so, what do I want to talk about uh, today? First of all, uh, one, uh, uh, once again, a general reminder. Uh, there is like a series, of, uh, a series of many consecutive updates on my blog right now, which I devote to one common thread of research. It is uh, connected to the process of me preparing a book on the role of cities and on the role of urbanization in our human civilization and in technological change. Uh, my working hypothesis is that cities uh, are essentially a social contrivance, some sort of social mechanism that we humans invented in antiquity in order to do two things. First of all, cities uh, in the past served as uh, let's sort uh, sort of solutions to territorial conflicts uh, between different ethnic groups in fertile plains where a lot of food could 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 be grown and uh, cities were points where let's uh, where let's say non-violent rivalry could take place with time cities as a social as a demographic anomaly developed another function in our culture. It is the function of creating new social roles for new people who come with demographic growth. And I have sort of a working hypothesis uh, that a lot of technological change that has been taking place in our culture over decades and many and even over centuries, those technological changes were oriented on uh, assuring sort of a rigid partition between cities on the one hand and uh, and the countryside on the other hand. So the cities have been and are that place where new social roles are being concocted and when they emerge and the countryside is the reserve of food. 
And the whole trick consists in sustaining uh, an ever-growing population with a sort of clear, rigid distinction between that place of social inventions or cities and the place where we make food to sustain that uh, social invention. So that graph that you can uh, see me talking uh, against is a graph uh, which I place uh, in this specific written update on my blog. It shows uh, three trends. So you can, sh you can see three lines. The continuous blue line in that graph uh, is the most complex variable, which I will introduce in a moment. It is the density of urban population denominated in units of general density in population. Uh, the orange line with small circles uh, is the surface of agricultural land measured in square kilometers. And uh, the green line with uh, red squares is the several yield or agricultural productivity measured in kilograms of several yield per hectare, uh, once again for the global economy as a whole. In order to make those three variables uh, comparable, I used a technique called uh, constant base index. So in each of the time series, which stretch from 1961 to until 2016, I chose the year 2000 as one, as the base of the index, huh? uh, so as to compare the three. Now, a few words of comment on that blue line, so on the density of urban population denominated in units of general density in population. This is a compound variable, uh, which I essentially made by myself, so a few words of explanation as for how it works. Uh, what I wanted to measure with this variable is the relative social difference uh, between uh, cities and the countryside. And I figured out that uh, one of the most fundamental metrics of any society is the density of population. So I took partial source variables in the database of the World Bank. And so I calculated the density of urban populations across the world. And now, in order to know how much difference is there between those uh, urban populations and the countryside, I divided that density in urban populations by the density of general population. So this coefficient, that blue line, shows, let's say, how, to what extent do cities or urban populations demarc from the countryside, how much more dense are they. And what is really freakish about that blue line, uh, those of you who are not very familiar with the, uh, with the social sciences might not notice it, but those who are can see it. That line is almost a straight line, that trend is almost straight. I even checked the, the growth rate along that trend and it keeps sticking to like 1% per year. Uh, to explain the thing to those who are maybe a little bit new to social sciences, it is very, very rare. It is extremely rare to find a social variable, a socioeconomic variable, uh, which would develop in such a linear pattern over such a long time. Most social phenomena evolve in like uh, bumps and jumps and waves. Even if there is a trend, that trend is to sort of... Uh, it, 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 it needs to be sort of dug out of the empirical data. Here I have basically an empirical variable because it is density of population, just denominated in specific units. And it is so linear that it is almost hard to believe. Uh, by experience in uh, social research, I know that if I have such a straight trend, which sort of cuts across other variables, and when those other va uh, variables demonstrate those bumps and waves, 
that straight trend is either like a deep truth, like a deep underlying uh, tensor of the whole social system, or it is a complete bullshit, which is uh, which makes a straight line completely by accident. So I am uh, sort of meditating about it. And now another thing that uh, sort of has sort of blown my mind when I was preparing this specific update on my blog, so I passed to another graph. This time it is a map. Uh, generally, uh, there is an increase in uh, the total surface of agricultural land across the world. And uh, it is much less consistent than the increase in agricultural productivity. So that variable, which I fished out of the database of the World Bank, the cereal yield per hectare, it changes more or less linearly and it is very evenly distributed uh, across the world. Uh, now, uh, over the last like 60 years, there was like one big jump, one big increase uh, in uh, the surface of agricultural land. And that increase was localized in the former Soviet Union, in the Russian Federation and in Kazakhstan. Uh, here, the map that you have behind me and sort of around me uh, is the change in the total surface of agricultural land between 1961 and 2016. So it is a little bit longer window in time. Uh, but that change ge uh, generally, or like half of that change, was uh, concentrated in a short window in time between 1989 and 1992. And then at the time it was concentrated that huge leap of uh, like more than four additional millions of square kilometers of agri agricultural land added like suddenly to to the lot it was concentrated precisely in the russian federation and in kazakhstan in the republic of kazakhstan so here, uh, like a freakish idea came to my mind, which is very much attached to my concept of collective intelligence. Between 1989 and 1992, we have that big addition, that big leap in the total surface of agricultural land on the planet. And that big leap is concentrated in the former Soviet Union. And when that leap takes place, Soviet Union dissolves. Soviet Union essentially collapses and transforms into a set of independent states. And now a freakish question comes to my mind. Uh, the dissolution of the Soviet Union and of the Soviet bloc in general. Was it a manifestation of collective intelligence of our entire global species? And that collective intelligence at some point in, in time sort of said to itself, okay guys, we need more land to grow food. Let's look for the best place to grow that food to increase uh, that land. Soviet Union, perfect. Let's transform politically Soviet Union. Let's transform institutionally that whole part of, of the uh, of the Eurasian continent, let's transform it and let's make it into a new reserve of food. I know it is crazy, I know it is a little bit in the science fiction realm, yet the facts are here and they are interesting. Okay, that would be all for, uh, for now. So once again, if you want to read more about the facts that I mentioned in this video, you go to the de description box below the video, you click on the link discoversocialsciences.com. Uh, the link takes you to the website of my blog and there you find a written update which has the same title as this video. So bye guys and have fun with the science.